who doesn't love a good discovery? For centuries, people have been uncovering strange and fascinating artifacts that have left us scratching our heads. Here are five of the most unearthly ancient discoveries that still have experts baffled. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this video. The first discovery we are going to talk about is the remains of dinosaurs which were found in Portugal a few weeks ago. Home repairs may find a variety of unexpected treasures, but one Portuguese homeowner unearthed the buried treasure on a far larger scale when he discovered what may be Europe's biggest dinosaur bones. According to a press release last week, a team of Portuguese and Spanish researchers excavated portions of what they think is a fossilized brachiosaurid sauropod skeleton in Monte Agudo, Pombal, Portugal in early August. Sauropods were herbivorous dinosaurs with long necks and tails that included the world's biggest dinosaurs. The researchers believe that the dinosaur was around 12 meters tall and 25 meters long based on the remnants discovered. So far, the team has discovered vital skeletal elements such as vertebrae and ribs. It is unusual to discover all of an animal's ribs like this, much alone in this configuration, keeping their original anatomical position," said Elizabeth Malafia, postdoctoral researcher at the University of Lisbon's Faculty of Sciences, in a press release. This technique of preservation is rather unusual in the fossil record of dinosaurs from the Portuguese Upper Jurassic, particularly sauropods. The finding is a part of a longer-term effort that started in 2017. According to the announcement, the owner discovered many fossilized bone pieces in his backyard while building work was being done on the property that year. He called the study team, which had begun the initial dig the previous year. A paleontologist and lecturer at the University of Edinburgh in Scotland, Steve Broussant, who was not involved with the experiment, described it as gobsmacking, a dinosaur ribcage jutting out of somebody's lawn. It just goes to demonstrate that you may possibly discover them any place there is rock of the proper age and correct kind for preserving Jurassic-aged bones, whether it's in the Badlands or someone's garden, he told CNN, adding that finding dinosaur remains is a combination of luck and circumstance. Wind and water erosion exposes rock in arid badland terrain, and the topography is often a hotspot for fossils. Dinosaurs of the Brachiosaurid family, to which the skeleton is presumed to belong, existed between the Upper Jurassic and Lower Cretaceous eras around 160 to 100 million years ago. This is not the first time that a fossilized dinosaur has been discovered in Europe lately. The bones of a Spinosaurid, a bipedal predatory dinosaur with a crocodile-like face, were discovered on the Isle of Wight, an island off the coast of England, in June. In other news, scientists claimed last month that they had discovered a new species of carnivorous dinosaur in northern Patagonia, Argentina, that was 11 meters long and had limbs similar to the Tyrannosaurus rex. The preservation of the skeleton discovered at Pombal suggests that more of it may be unearthed, with more excavation planned at the site. Then, we have the discovery of whales in Egypt. Egyptologists have discovered a new type of four-legged whale that existed roughly 43 million years ago. The amphibious Phyomycetus Anubis fossil was unearthed in Egypt's western desert. It was called after Anubis, the ancient Egyptian jackal-headed deity of the dead, because of its skull. Over the period of 10 million years, the progenitors of contemporary whales evolved from deer-like creatures that lived on land. The Phyomycetus anubis, which weighed an estimated 600 kilograms and measured 3 meters 10 feet in length, had powerful jaws to seize food. The whale could walk on land as well as swim in water. Scientists from Mansoura University examined the fragmentary skeleton discovered in Egypt's Phyom Depression. Although it is currently desert, the region was originally covered by sea and is a rich source of fossils. While this is not the first time a fossil of a whale with legs has been unearthed, the Phyomycetus anubis is thought to be Africa's first semi-aquatic whale. The earliest whales are considered to have emerged some 50 million years ago in South Asia. A paleontology team in Peru unearthed a 43 million year old whale fossil with four legs, webbed feet, and hooves in 2011. Up next, we have the world's first temple, which is located in Turkey. The Neolithic site located close to Anlurfa in the southeastern region of Turkey, Gobekli Tepe. The site, which is characterized by layers of carved megaliths and is thought to date back to the 9th or 10th millennia before the Common Era, is considered to have been a sanctuary of ceremonial importance. At Gobekli Tepe, which is located close to the border of Syria, there are a number of T-shaped megaliths made of limestone that have been set in circular formations. Some of these stones are over 5 meters tall and weigh as much as 50 tons. Each completed circle was covered with soil and the procedure was again atop the same location. A number of these structures have been stacked one atop the other. 
Some of the megaliths are left blank, while others have intricate patterns cut into the wider sides of their surfaces. These designs may include depictions of foxes, scorpions, lions, and other animals. In the 1960s, Gobekli Tepe was explored for the first time, but it was written off as a medieval cemetery at the time. This is despite the fact that it is almost 6,000 years older than Stonehenge. It wasn't until the 1990s that it was investigated once again, and at that time its actual age, which was calculated by contrasting the relics of tools that were found at the site with those that had been carbon dated from other sites in the area, became clear. The fact that there were no trash pits, hearths, or any other indicators of domestic life at the site, along with the discovery of tens of thousands of bones of wild animals, the majority of which belonged to gazelle, suggests that it was not a permanent settlement. The majority of the gazelle bones were found at the site. The vast majority of specialists consider it to have been a sacred gathering place, the kind of location that would have drawn devotees from large distances. Because the remains at the site suggest that hunter-gatherers were responsible for the construction of Gobekli Tepe, and the presence of such large quantities of the bones of wild animals suggests that these people had not yet domesticated animals or begun farming. This site has prompted some people to rethink the relationship between settlement and the progression of socio-cultural development. The idea that settlement was necessary for the development of complex social systems and the building of temples has been around for a long time. However, the work that was necessary to build Gobekli Tepe would have required that a large number of builders be housed and fed in one place. This suggests that the coordinated effort may have necessitated settlement rather than following it. The next discovery which we are going to talk about is Karahan Tepe. Turkey is celebrating the discovery of an 11,400-year-old monumental site as one of the world's oldest communities, contradicting conventional wisdom about when and why humans first established. Karahan Tepe, the first of a dozen prehistoric sites excavated by Turkish authorities near the Syrian border in the southeastern province of San Lierfa, includes homes within a vast ritualistic complex demonstrating that hunter-gatherers built permanent settlements long before agriculture 10,000 years ago. We now have a fresh perspective on history, says Nekmi Karl, an assistant professor of prehistory at Istanbul University who is conducting the excavation at Karahan Tepe, a site cut into a hill on a high limestone plateau between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. At Karahan Tepe, where people lived year-round for roughly 1,500 years, sacred and secular places were erected concurrently, and no evidence of agricultural plants have been discovered. Karahan Tepe is around 35 kilometers from Gobekli Tepe, a UNESCO World Heritage Site that claims to include the world's oldest temple constructions. Gobekli Tepe, which dates back to 9600 BC, altered notions about early civilization when field study performed by German archaeologist Klaus Schmidt was published in the mid-2000s. Previously assumed to be a single site where nomadic people gathered to worship, Gobekli Tepe is now part of a network of contemporaneous villages that stretches over 100 kilometers and includes Karahan Tepe and at least 11 additional excavated sites. Domestic constructions at Gobekli Tepe have also been discovered recently. We find colossal constructions for the first time in the world's oldest settlements in this area, Carol explains. Scientists have long assumed that the domestication of plants and animals approximately 10,000 years ago was what drove people to adopt a sedentary lifestyle, and that the increase in food production enabled them to establish complex communities and build the groundwork for civilization. However, emerging evidence that Stone Age people erected permanent buildings for spiritual, rather than absolutely necessary, activities is challenging the traditional wisdom that they lacked a large-scale civilization with the vision of labor and common ceremonial themes. The scientific community will need time to understand and embrace this game-changing finding, says Mehmet Zadoan, retired professor of archaeology at Istanbul University. We must now reconsider what we thought we knew. The civilization arose from a horizontal society that started cultivating wheat because people were hungry, and evaluate this time with its multifaceted society. The Neolithic period, which coincided with the end of the Ice Age, symbolizes humanity's tremendous transition from foraging to farming. The Neolithic era laid the groundwork for today's society, from family law to inheritance to the state and bureaucracy, Zadoan explains. The circular chambers of Karahan Tepe were designed ahead of time, and the highly skillful processing of bedrock indicates a remarkable ancient architectural engineering, according to Karl. Building several buildings for diverse reasons reflects a complex thought system. Religion cannot be discussed in its genuine meaning, but we witness a series of unique restricted rites that are dramatically put out. This is represented in a chamber containing one of the most massive and oldest instances of phallic symbolism. 
Eleven enormous penises carved from the bedrock and guarded by a bearded head with a serpent's body that erupts from the wall. Carl believes the room, which has a distinct entrance and exit as well as a water channel, was utilized for a rites of passage. Female characters are almost totally missing. Wildlife reliefs vary from insects to animals, with menacing monsters grabbing men's heads. There are more portrayals of people than in the menagerie discovered at Gobekli Tepe, which is around 200 years earlier, demonstrating that humans began to regard themselves as different from the animal world, according to Carl. At Karahan Tepe, dozens of T-shaped, stele abstract renderings of the human form have been discovered. Archaeologists have excavated around 1% of the 60,000 square feet. Since 2019, the site has been providing remote university education in record speed throughout the epidemic prolonged dig season. According to Culture Minister Mehmet Nuri Ersoy, Turkey may open Karahan Tepe to visitors next year as excavations continue. The government ultimately intends to draw 5 million people per year to Gobekli Tepe and the chain of Neolithic ruins known as Tas Tepler, which translates as Stone Hills. Ersoy stated in September that it is spending roughly $14 million to extend excavations to up to 30 sites in the region and to create a Neolithic research center, but no timetable for the project has been revealed. At the conclusion of Karahan Tepe's existence, its residents methodically buried their temples like you would a dead person, according to Carl. He recognizes the hazards of restoring the site to millions of people today, but believes that everyone has a right to explore these ancient sites. Then, we have Mummified Dinosaurs A giant mummified dinosaur body discovered in Canada seems to have stepped right off the set of Jurassic Park. The 110 million year old fossil, discovered fully preserved with its scaly armor and intestines intact, has been dubbed the greatest preserved dinosaur on Earth. The magnificent fossilized notosaur, which is now housed at Canada's Tyrell Museum, was discovered by miners. The massive plant-eating beast was 18 feet long and weighed the same as a compact vehicle. The massive beast is said to have perished after being pushed out to sea following strong floods. Scientists are perplexed as to how it managed to remain so well maintained for so long. The bones have been identified as a real dinosaur mummy. The dinosaur is so well preserved that it could have been strolling about a few weeks ago, University of Bristol biologist Jacob Vinther told National Geographic. This is the first time I've seen anything like it. We don't simply have a skeleton, said Caleb Brown, a researcher at Tyrell Museum. We have a dinosaur as it would have been. National Geographic released the first images of the ancient species. The amazing fossilized bones were found by a Canadian heavy equipment operator at a mine in Alberta, Western Canada. It was then carefully excavated from the earth and given over to specialists, who meticulously uncovered the beast's bones. It was so clean that scientists could investigate the skin remains that covered its rough armor plates. Other fossils have shown that most dinosaurs had scaly skin, however certain species, notably the infamous Velociraptor from Jurassic Park, are thought to have possessed feathers. The plant-eating notosaur, weighing 1.4 tons, is said to have roamed the Earth between 110 million and 112 million years ago. Two 20-inch long spikes protruded from its shoulder, enabling it to protect itself against predators. Although it's unclear if the size of these spikes increased the beast's attraction to the opposite sex, the combination of armor and barb was supposed to be an important aspect of its mating ritual. Chemical analyses showed evidence of the dinosaur's pigment, suggesting it had a reddish color with lighter horns. The armor and natural weaponry of the monster would have had the twin function of frightening opponents and enticing mates. During combat, it may have utilized its spikes to gain favor of a member of the opposing sex. Normally, dinosaur armor deteriorates throughout the degradation and fossilization process. However, the notosaur's bony plates and scales have survived quite intact. Keratin sheaths, the same material that human fingernails are composed of, continue to cover the plates, known as osteoderms. By increasing the breadth of the dinosaur's armor, these sheaths made it seem more frightening and formidable. Donald Henderson, curator of dinosaurs at the Royal Tyrell Museum, added, I've been dubbing this one the Rosetta Stone for armor. The notosaur's corpse is supposed to have washed up in a river before being pushed out to sea and sunk into the mud. It was trapped in minerals here, preserving its form while layers of rock buried it over millions of years. The fossilized dinosaur is now on exhibit at the Royal Tyrell Museum, where visitors may judge whether the scaly beast's spikes and armor made it a lover or a warrior. Our last discovery is Germany's 10 million year old teeth. Archaeologists unearthed two 9.7 million year old teeth in Eppelsheim, Germany in 2016. They weren't quite human, but they looked a lot like Lucy's teeth, 
a renowned relic of Australopithecus afarensis, an early progenitor of Homo sapiens. These teeth were 4 million years older than Lucy, the earliest homonym species, the subfamily that includes humans, extinct humans, and their direct forebears. However, National Geographic was quick to caution against sensationalizing the discovery by portraying it as proof that humanity evolved in Europe rather than Africa. The teeth might belong to an extinct hominin monkey very distantly related to humans, or an altogether other species, potentially even a ruminant animal. More investigation on this amazing finding is undoubtedly required. We want to avoid conjecture. What these discoveries clearly reveal is that the gaps in our knowledge and the fossil record are far larger than previously assumed. Researcher leader Herbert Lutz, deputy museum director of Germany's Mainz Natural History Museum, told ResearchGate, It's a total mystery where this person came from and why no one has ever discovered a tooth like this someplace else before. This brings us to the end of the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Also, click on the notification bell to get notified every time we upload a new video.